Welcome to Singapore. I'm Luke Martin. This city is obsessed with food. There is just so much to try here. How can you settle on one thing? Cue the Singapore Food Festival. The festival features a diverse variety of flavors from the 19th to the 30th of July this year. So at the time of posting this video, the Singapore Food Festival is happening. But it doesn't just end with tasting the food here in Singapore, you can also experience it. So today I'm taking you for a farm to table dining experience. It's gonna be a great episode. Let's go check out the Singapore Food Festival. I'm here at the 30th Singapore Food Festival. It happens every year. Today we're gonna to be trying all kinds of different foods, drinks and desserts. You can try it all here in one place. It's gonna be great. Let's go find some food. So for my first stop, I'm gonna try out Ruma Makan Minang. They're specializing in halal Indonesian Minang Kabao style food. We're gonna speak with the chef and learn about how he's taking the heritage food and kind of shaking things up a little bit. Yeah, I'm the third generation for this uh, branding called Mama Kaminang. After me graduating from CIA, which is the culinary school in Singapore, I started to travel more. Special dish, which is the uh, Padang style burrito. I used to eat burrito in New York when I was there, and then I started to realize that Padang food can be combined with uh, with the wrap. And of course, the result, especially for my parents, is like, no, this is not the way how you serve people. But I just break uh, the rule of authentic food in in my cuisine. Got my first food from Chef Arif. This is his Padang burrito. Super interesting. He spent some time in New York and he figured why not. We're gonna grab a couple different foods and take it back to the table and then sample everything together. Next up, another heritage food. This place is called Good Graces. She's using recipes from her grandmother. Let's go speak with her, learn a little bit more about the brand and try out uh, some of their foods. Let's go. Hi, I'm Grace from Good Graces. I'm having a lot of fun right now with my grandmother's recipes. My signature is a, a dry laksa. In Singapore, people are more familiar with uh, the gravy laksa with a lot of coconut milk. So this dry laksa is a little bit more unusual. The rempa, which is the spice paste, 15 different ingredients. So it takes me six hours just to make that paste. All right, we just got food number two. This is from Good Graces. It's her dry laksa goreng, so kind of fried laksa. Unique, but also her grandmother's original recipe with tons of flavor packed into there. Let's keep going. So our third stop is this one right behind me here. It's called Blue Smoke, something a little bit more contemporary this time. Let's go talk with the chef and owner and learn what they're offering. My brand, of course, is Blue Smoke. We've been around for about one and a half years. Uh, we are actually well known for our Asian version of the smoke and the grill house. I, I, I got a whole host of stuff, man. You can actually have the um, Stingray. The Stingray is a must-have guess. It's, it's a, a recipe that's one of a kind, and we actually smoke it with lychee wood over 20 hours. It's in your face, all right? So it's, 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 uh, it's loud. All right, we've got ourselves another food. This is the grilled and smoked stingray steak from Blue Smoke. Let's go to the table and eat now. All right, we're sat down now. Time to dig into some of these foods. We've got the beautiful burrito from uh, Ruma Makan Minang. So you can see a beautiful piece of rendang, beef rendang in there. Some rice, some veggies all wrapped up in that burrito. Back here, we've got Good Grace's dry laksa goreng. So fried laksa. Oh man, that just smells so, so good. And then over here, we've got the grilled and smoked stingray steak from Blue Smoke. And just look at how beautiful that is. Oh man, this all looks so good. There's so much to try here. Let's give this rendang burrito a try. It tastes exactly as the name suggests. It's a rendang burrito. It tastes like nasi padang. You've got the rice, you've got a little bit of coconut flavor going on in there. Really tender coconut beef. Mm. Oh, the rendang is beautifully tender. Yum. Okay, next up the dry laksa goreng. So fried laksa. Really interesting, but still a very traditional heritage food. Let's try this out from Good Graces. First time trying it, uh, goreng, so fried. Usually, you know, lax is gonna be in that really soupy broth, but this way it completely covers the, the noodles. That's really complex, there's a lot of flavor. She said that that sauce takes six hours, there's like 15 ingredients to make it. Yeah. Mm. All right, last but definitely not least, we've got the stingray smoked and grilled from Blue Smoke. Give that a little squeeze of lime. Let's dig into that. That is a thick cut of stingray. If you've never had it before, it is a beautifully 
delicious fish. That is a really meaty fish. It's not as flaky as like a white fish. It's got like a more firm, almost like a, like a chicken texture. And then you can taste that smoke. He's using lychee wood. It's super smoky, but it's also been rubbed with chili and then sourness from that lime. Look at this beautiful fish. Just look at how thick that cut is. That is safe to say. It is a steak. Yeah, if you've never tried Stingray, Singapore Food Festival, perfect place to try it out. We gotta take you for dessert next. We're going to Sweet Salad. For dessert, we're gonna be trying out this place behind me called Yat Kayan. They make homemade desserts. So we're gonna try their signature avocado sago bowl. Let's order one up. So this is the homemade avocado with uh, vanilla ice cream, taro balls, and sago. So let's try that out from Yat Kayan. Mm. Oh, yum. Very smooth shaved ice. You get this kind of chewy little pieces of taro and sago, and then very refreshing on a hot night here in Singapore. Mm. Yum. The avocado gives it such a creamy kind of earthy flavor. There's even more to try here at Singapore Food Festival, so let's go for a drink next. So for our drink, we're trying something really unique, a first of its kind. They're using a sustainable method using food waste, soy whey, to make wine. It's called Sachi. Let's speak with them a little bit and then order up one of their cocktails. So Sachi is the world's first soy alcoholic beverage brand. Uh, I'm the founder of Sachi and our mission is to bring bliss to people and the environment. So what we do here is we turn soy whey, which is a liquid byproduct from tofu manufacturing, and turn them into alcoholic beverages. Try and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, just got our cocktail from Sachi. So using their sustainable uh, soy-based wine, this uh, cocktail they made me up is called the Melon Ball. Oh yeah, it's sweet. Kind of reminds me of sake. And then this one's with like the melon flavor. Really good. It's not too strong, but uh, I think I said it was about five and a half percent. Cocktail number two, this one's called Coco Lopez, still using the Sachi wine. It's really light, like it's not a super strong flavor. Sustainable, first of its kind in the world. That's super smooth. This has been amazing, but the Singapore Food Festival doesn't end at just Festival Village. There's all kinds of experiences happening across Singapore, including workshops, one of which I'm going to attend now. During my workshop, I learned how to make the heritage dessert Minjiang Kue, hands-on with the folks at Munchie Pancake, a shop that's taking the traditional dessert and putting a modern swing on it with new, unique flavors. So I just finished my Minjiang Kue workshop here at Munchie Pancake. So I think I did all right. I made mine with peanut butter. The guys here are really friendly. That was a really uh, interesting learning experience and now the best part, tasting it. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's really delicious. It's not crazy sweet or anything. I love, there's a little bits of peanut in there too that are kind of crunchy. And then the batter is really kind of spongy. I think mine's all right, but I bet you theirs is even better. <laughs> I am 
from what seems to be very far from the hustle and bustle of downtown Singapore, but I'm only about a 25 minute drive away and I've come to this jetty to take you for a farm to table dining experience here in Singapore, but this isn't your typical farm. I have to take a boat to go there. So let's get on the boat and I'll show you the farm. I have just arrived to the farm. This is called Ahua Kelong. It's actually a floating seafood farm somewhere off the coast of Singapore. So they are growing fresh seafood and then supplying it to their restaurant called Scaled, where we will be dining at later tonight. So a full farm to table experience. This is so cool, guys. We are graciously invited here by the owner, Kai. This is not open to the public, but he's let us come to show you guys their Kelong, this fresh seafood farm here in Singapore. So let's go chat with Kai and learn a little bit more about where we are. We are on the eastern shore of Singapore where we are at the floating fish farm and our brand is called Ahua Kelong. Um, Kelong is actually a stilted structure on sea uh, where it's tilted into the seabed, usually structure, and then a uh, floating fish farm attached. This one we are on now is like anchored down and purely a floating fish yeah, farm. Yeah, we are floating. I can feel yeah. us moving right now. Yeah. Um, we have barramundi, uh, red snappers, we have um, pearl groupers, um, black groupers, um, as, a, as well as a golden pomfret. Okay. So these are the typical, typical fish we farm. And we also wild catch our own green lip mussels. Hundreds of these floating fish farms in Singapore. The actual Kelongs in Singapore, there is four left. And then we have one of those. We, we are the first farmer-owned restaurant in Singapore. So 80% of the menu at scale um, is actually made up of our own produce. So our own fish, our own uh, flower crab, our wild caught mussels and stuff. So you went fresh fish, you see like a nice and clear slime, shiny shiny. The eyes are super clear and then the gills on them are like uh, nice and bright red. We are up on top here, nice view up here. And Kai's just explaining how they harvest it. So they've got an old motor that kind of pulls up the nets and then this huge, huge net here to pluck them out. What did you say? I am allergic to seafood. So I am allergic I, to seafood. When I take crustaceans like crabs, prawns, lobsters, then my body will start to swell. Well, I'll eat the extra mussels that you don't eat. M mussels I eat, molas I take. So we just harvested some of the, the green lip mussels, these guys right here. And uh, apparently Kai's gonna cook them up for us right here on the floating seafood farm. So cool. Very fresh, I mean, that is as fresh as it gets. But yeah, like no. This one, it's a female. Okay. The color, oh, can you yeah, see? The yeah. color is quite so This one is a male, female. This is quite orange. Orangey. Yeah. So Chef Kai's parboiled us some, uh, some fresh green lip mussels. Cheers, man. From the sea. Yeah. yeah Cheers. Just, just no like artificial stuff. It's all natural. You don't need anything special. That is good. Yeah, on it its is. own. These guys are gonna burst in your mouth. Some people like it, some people don't. It's very flavorful. Mm. I got you the smaller one, so it's not so crazy. Okay. XL clamps, low low gun, low gun. Yeah, Can I say it again? Yeah, it's actually spelled L O K A N. Mm. So, oh wow, it it's got like a creamy layer on the inside. What an interesting experience this has been, learning about seafood farming here at Ahua Kelong, and you can just tell how passionate Kai is. He's really retaining the traditions, but also he's supplying sustainable seafood across Singapore, and it's time to take this full circle. We've seen the farm, now it's time to go to table. We're going to scaled restaurant to taste some more of the fresh seafood from Ahua Kelong. Let's go. So we're here at Scale. Can you tell us like what style of food are you guys preparing here? How would you explain it? Here is like more of a um, Asian fusion uh, thing that we do here. And we're not trying to replicate the traditional dishes, but what we're trying to do is to create something that we can call our own. Take whatever seafood that you can get your hands on based on local, you showcase it in ways that you find that you love and you enjoy cooking. We saw the mussels, we harvested them, right. we tried the fresh ones. Now I want you to try it with the condiment.
sat down here at Scaled and Kai has sent out three of their signature dishes. First dish here is using those beautiful green lip mussels. This is sort of an Indian Chinese fusion dish. So it's a curried green lip mussels and then with these fried manto, these fried steamed buns on top, which will be perfect for lapping up that curry sauce. All right, let's try the beautiful green lipped mussels in curry. I'm just gonna go deep in there for one of those mussels. Look at that, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. That curry is just so full of flavor, but still retains the flavor of that beautifully fresh green lip mussel. That curry goes so perfectly with it. Okay, I love the addition of the manto because it's just perfectly laps up all that curry. Look at that, oh yeah. The manto is a little bit sweet and it's crispy on the outside, but the inside is so spongy that it just absorbs the curry so well. Oh yeah, that's perfect. This just looks so interesting. This is chawon mushi, but you can see it's black because it's actually using squid ink. And then there's three types of eggs. There's the chicken egg and the chawon mushi. And then on top, we've got century egg chopped up and then ikura, so salmon roe. This is a very unique and innovative dish. Chawon mushi with the, the black squid ink and then the century egg, the ikura, salmon roe. And then I gotta get a little bit of that pickled ginger as well. You can definitely taste the century egg in there. It gives it almost a little bit of a funk. You get some pops from the ikura, and then the pickled ginger, actually almost sweet and sour. Man, that's good. This is a smoked barramundi, and then it's blended with cream cheese into this pate, and then it's topped with caramelized onions and olives, and then served with some pickled shoots, and then also this beautiful pan toasted sourdough. Now I am seriously looking forward to this dish. This is that fresh barramundi that we saw earlier, mixed with cream cheese into a pate, served with some caramelized onions and olives. Get a little bit of that, and then I'll also just grab a sprout here and put that on. Perfectly balanced with the cream cheese and the smoke, and then that caramelized sweetness too. And then a little bit of a crispy sour pickle on top. And then the bread. Man. So another dish has arrived. This is their prawn aglio, and it's been made with a prawn dashi that has been reduced down to a thick, thick prawn sauce. Mm. It's like concentrated prawn pasta. And next we've got a roasted grouper dish that's served with some kind of Korean style japchae sweet potato noodles at the bottom. There's also some clams in there. Let's try a piece of grouper. But this is very Cantonese despite the Korean noodles. Let's try it out. That grouper is so soft. Farm fresh grouper. What a full circle experience this has been. Seeing the fresh seafood, now sitting down at the table here at scale, wow. Singapore really knows how to cook. Guys, remember, at the time of posting this video, Singapore Food Festival is happening for real foodies only. Make sure you check it out. I had an incredible experience at the Singapore Food Festival and also at our farm to table dining experience. Don't forget guys, Singapore is a year round foodie destination and you can try all of the foods I had at Singapore Food Festival outside of the festival as well. Singapore really just has it all. Make sure if you haven't already subscribed and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.